welcome back. In this video we're going to take a look at soft proofing both in Photoshop and Lightroom and ask the question how accurate is it and what do all those out of gamut warnings really mean? And to visualize how the colors in our photograph can be printed on the papers of our choice we'll use another piece of software to visualize how those colors work with the paper profiles. So let's jump in now and have a look. So firstly, what is soft proofing anyway? Well, soft proofing is a way that we can attempt to visualize or simulate the effect of the image when printed on the paper of our choice. And of course, if you don't have a printer and you don't have printer profiles installed on your system, you can't use this. But let's have a look at the easier way to visualize the soft proofing and that is in Lightroom. And you need to be in the develop module and if you have a photograph open you'll see down on the bottom toolbar a little label called soft proofing and if you can't see that come over here click on the little drop down arrow and select the option for soft proofing I've already done that and so we can tick that box the background immediately changes to white and we get a visualization of our image when printed on paper now I'm just going to turn the gamut warning off at this stage uh, with this photograph, I've chosen it because it's quite a colourful photograph, has quite a big contrast range, as well as some very saturated colours. And you'll see that the first thing we do when we select the soft proofing is our histogram changes quite dramatically. One end of the histogram will give you the monitor gamut warning, and I've never had anything show me out of gamut on that. And the other one shows the paper gamut warning. Now, at this stage, I've chosen a paper which is um, Canson Rag Photographic, which is a, a matte finish paper, very smooth surface, excellent for printing images behind glass, but doesn't have a fantastic D-Max or black point, and also a slightly restricted colour range. So if we hover over this uh, gamut warning, you'll see here in red on the image, areas of the image that it says are outside the gamut of the, of the paper. And we'll come back to that in a minute. We'll have a look at our options. Um, and to be able to look at this proof copy, obviously you need to have installed some paper profiles. I have a number of different ones installed here. But while we're looking at just how to set this up, let's jump over into Photoshop and have a look at the, the proof setup in Photoshop. So moving over to Photoshop, I have the same image open in Photoshop and there are two ways we can go about soft proofing in Photoshop. The old traditional way was to go up to the View menu, go to Proof Setup, Custom and then select the paper profile you need to print on. And I've got a lot of profiles installed here but let's go back and pick the same one that I was using uh, in Lightroom which was um, Canson rag photographic which is this one and we have the rendering intent and obviously we want to see the paper color and we can preview that and unfortunately this little menu box hovers over the top of the image on screen I could shrink it down to have a look but you'll see here here's the option it gives me an appearance of how it will look on paper what this doesn't do though however is give you a gamut warning so let's cancel out of that and we'll go into the other option which I think works much better and that's to go to the print menu, file print and here you select your printer, you select your paper which I've already done and you'll see here your rendering intent and down at the bottom of the print menu you've got your options here to match the print colors and show the gamut warning now with, with the match print colors turned off it looks exactly the same as it does on screen but when you turn on the match print colors and gamut warning and show paper white it gives you a simulation and it shows you pretty much exactly the same gamut warning as we get in Lightroom because we're printing the same image on the same paper so it doesn't really matter whether you use Lightroom or Photoshop to do your soft proofing the effect is pretty much the same but of course what we need to understand is what all this really means in terms of your finished photograph. So let's jump back into uh, Lightroom and have a look at a couple of options. So quitting out of this, let's jump back to uh, Lightroom and have a look at the options there. And 
just pop back into Lightroom. And the first thing we're going to have a quick look at is the rendering intent. Now, a lot of people get confused about this. But as far as my experience is concerned, using the relative colour metric rendering intent is the way to go for probably 95% of photographs. The perceptual rendering intent, and if I click on that, we see a slightly different rendering intent. Um, it doesn't really make that much difference. It doesn't affect the out-of-gamut colours. It just makes a very slight difference. And the perceptual rendering intent just changes the colours a little bit more and shrinks everything down to within gamut. But as I mentioned before, how does all this make sense and how do we understand what's in gamut and what's out of gamut and how can we adjust it? Well, one of the things we can do in Lightroom, and that is to make a proof copy by clicking this button here. And I've already done that, so I'll click over onto the proof copy, which you'll see here it's working on RAG Photographic, relative rendering intent, and here's where I can start to make some adjustments and I can darken the blacks a little bit, I can increase the contrast, but you'll see that what happens here is once I do that, I know that that's going to help me with my print, but it doesn't really make a lot of difference to the out of gamut. In fact, it, there's more out of gamut now than there was before. So that doesn't really help. But I have another piece of software that we can use to visualise how these colours interact and how they fit within the paper gamut. So let's jump into that now and have a look. The piece of software that I'm using is a program called ColorThink and it allows us to visualise colour spaces, colour profiles and colour information from photographs in three dimensions. And looking at this, you will have seen this before. This is the ProPhoto colour space, and you normally see it as a two-dimensional model. But with this, we can rotate it, and so we can turn it side on. And now we're looking at the lightness values vertically, which is black at the bottom, white at the top. And then we have our A and B axes going at right angles. So that's all very good. That's our colour space that we work in when we're working in Lightroom and Photoshop. So what I've done is I've loaded the colour information from the photograph we're using as the example. And I'll turn that on now. And let's have a look at that. And you'll see that all of the colours here are now plotted as dots. And they, of course, they all fit within the, the ProPhoto colour space because the, that's the space that the photograph is uh, measured in. So you can see here that we've got some fairly bright colours, we've got some fairly strong colours, but... Generally, we're well within the bounds of the ProPhoto RGB colour space. But what's important now is not the ProPhoto colour space, it's the colour space that we're going to be printing into. So I'm going to turn ProPhoto off, and now we're looking at the uh, colour space for, or the colour profile for RAG Photographic, which, as we know, has a limited colour gamut. If I just turn ProPhoto back on for a second, you'll see the massive difference. So let's now compare the colour information in that photograph that we had with the colour space for Platine. And we can see straight away we've got a bit of a problem. Right at the bottom of the, of the profile, we've got a whole bunch of colours down here that are out of gamut. They can't be printed because we know that RAG Photographic can't print deep blacks. And we also have a little bit of an issue is we have some of the brighter orangey red colours out of gamut and also a little bit of the pale bluey whites. Now that didn't show up in the gamut warning in Photoshop and Lightroom, but it's showing up as being out of gamut here. So what happens if we go from the RAG photographic paper profile and look at the platine colour profile, which is a much larger colour space. I've turned that on and I'll just make that semi-transparent so we can see the effect somewhere about there. And once this has a second or so to register, you'll see now that pretty much all of those colours are now within gamut, even those dark ones down the bottom, because platine has a much richer colour gamut. So that's much better, and that's why we only see a little bit of clipping when we look at the platine. But while we're here, let's have a look at a custom profile that I've had uh, made for both of these papers, and we'll see the difference between what a, what, what's called a canned profile, which is one the manufacturer supplies, and one that you can get made 
customised for your printer and optimised for the particular paper. Let's have a look at that now. And just to make things a little easier, I've scaled this uh, colour space up. I had to shrink it down because Profoto is such a big colour space. Now we're working in the uh, paper profiles. We're working with a much more restricted range of colours. So we're still looking at the platine uh, profile as supplied by Canson. And you can see, we're, yes, we've got a little bit of out of gamut and we're a little bit of out of gamut down in those blacks. But what happens if we go to a... a um, custom profile that I've had made let's just make that semi-transparent and let's see what happens the custom profile actually provides us with let's just go back and try and turn down the uh, the normal profile a little bit so we can see the difference it's a little bit hard to see but yet there you go the solid line inside is the profile supplied by Canson. The outside line is the increased colour availability we have with a custom profile, and particularly when we're getting down into the darker ranges of colours. And you can see now I've picked up nearly all of those out of gamut colours. So let's turn off the one supplied by Canson, and we're now looking at our custom profile with the colour information from our uh, photograph plotted in and yes we've still got a few but only very minor amount of colors out of gamut we still have those very bright bluey whites showing us out of gamut and just a tiny little bit of the darker tones out of gamut so what we're seeing on our soft proofing in Lightroom and Photoshop is reasonably accurate but it's not telling us exactly the full story so Let's pop back now and see what we can do with that soft proofing to get an improved result. So we've jumped back out of Color Think and we're back in Lightroom looking at our preview of the image with the soft proofing turned on. And I'm looking at the uh, canned profile, the profile supplied by Canson for Platine. And as we saw in looking at Color Think, if I use the custom profile that I have for this paper, and let's just have a look at that, you'll see now that. With that expanded color gamut of that custom profile we've now got pretty much everything in this photograph within gamut i think if we zoom in there are a couple of places showing a small amount of out of gamut color so what does all this mean we've got a few colors out of gamut what's going to happen when we print well let's go back to the canned profile for a minute because that gives us a better idea so these colors are showing us out of gamut but we have a rendering intent in place here to handle the colours. And when we go to print, that rendering intent is going to take those colours that are out of gamut and move them slightly so that they fall within gamut. And because in this photograph only a very small amount is showing out of gamut, we're not going to have an issue. The photograph is going to look fine. It will probably, uh, you won't even notice it. As long as you've borne in mind that when you go from soft proofing and look at your original image the image on screen is going to have a little bit more contrast and maybe a little bit more saturation so if we make a few adjustments in the printing process we're going to be able to print that without any problems at all but what happens when we come to try and use the, the matte paper the Canson rag photographic that we saw that that had quite a lot of um, out of gamut We've got our simulation of paper and ink. Yes, we've got a bit more out of gamut. Well, let's try the um, custom profile. Uh, no, I don't have the custom profile. I'll have to load that. And this is where it gets a bit tricky because if you have all these profiles installed on your system, you've got to then go and find it. Now, for some reason, good old um, Lightroom doesn't always want to pick up all of these ones. Let's go through here, Canson rag photographic. Yes, we've got to choose from what's available. And now we have the custom profile. And you'll see with my custom profile for the matte paper, I'm virtually the same as with Platine. I've got virtually nothing out of gamut. So let's go and have a look in Photoshop and have a look at the same options. So moving back to Photoshop, we've got the same photograph open. We've got the same rendering intent. Let's go and look at the file 
print preview because that gives us our out of gamut warning and if I go and choose my original profile which was the canned profile or what they call a canned profile supplied by Canson rag photographic whoops the wrong printer rag photographic yes we've got the same indication we've got those same colors out of gamut but then if I go and choose my custom profile you'll see that it will actually bring most of that um, into gamut and again we have the same more or less the same reading but what we need to understand is even though there are some colors showing us out of gamut we have a rendering intent and it doesn't matter people ask me oh should I use a different rendering intent well let's have a look at the option it makes virtually no difference in this case so relative color metric is the rendering intent we should be using and we can print confidently knowing that these very small out of gamut colors are going to be okay but then what happens, we know that we're going to have a little bit of a loss of contrast and a little bit of a loss of saturation when we're printing with this matte paper. So let's go back out of that. And I've made some print adjustments or output adjustments which involves a bit of sharpening, a little bit of extra contrast and a, a little bit of um, extra saturation. We can just quickly turn those layers on. You see I've darkened the blacks. I've added some color saturation what happens now if I go and have a look at my soft proofing preview I've got my expanded range with my custom profile and it's showing me even more out of gamut but what is going to happen is that this is going to print fine I've printed this image before and it's perfectly satisfactory so the out of gamut warning can be a little bit of a red flag to some people but if it's only a small amount of the photograph, it's not really going to affect you uh, in the final analysis when you get your print. It's going to look fine. So what have we learnt from looking at all of these soft proofing information? Well, the most important thing is not to get too hung up on the out-of-gamut colours. They'll be handled by the rendering intent. What's more important is the adjustments you make for the print. And the proof of the pudding will be when I print this image. So let's go ahead now and print this and see how it comes out in the final analysis. So let's go and press print. Everything is set up and the image will go to print. And let's have a look at it now. And here's our print come out of the printer. So let's have a look at it under control lighting and see how it looks. So here's my print straight out of the printer and it looks fantastic. We've made those appropriate adjustments for the paper and the color gamut. We're not worried too much about those out of gamut colors and the print looks fantastic. So if you want to learn how to print to perfection, why not get my ebook that's available on the website now and you can learn step by step how to work through the process of taking your photograph all the way through to a perfect print. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you again soon.